Timelapse Assembler provides a free, simple and quick solution for compiling JPEG timelapses on Mac with the possibility of creating 4 and 8K timelapses. For Timelapse Assembler to recognize that your images are one timelapse, the suffix of each picture needs to count up in a numerical order. If they are just a jumble of letters, they won't be recognized as a sequence and will not import. However, don't worry as most cameras already follow this convention. First, transfer your time lapses off your camera into a single folder on your computer. Make sure that any extra images before or after the time lapse, which you don't want to include in the final video, are not in this folder. Download and install the software from the link in the description. This program is not published on the App Store, so you will need to right click and press open. Once launched, open the folder your time lapse is located in. Under Codec, select H.264. This is a very common codec and is ideal for uploading to the web. Frame rate is the number of images which is shown on screen in one second. You will want to set this to 24, 25 or 30 FPS depending on where you live and where you are uploading to. If you live in North America, 30 FPS is most common, whilst in Europe and many other countries, 25 FPS is used. I'm going to be setting this to 25 frames per second. Under the Dimensions tab, we need to set our resolution. Resolution defines the number of individual dots an image is made up of. The most common resolution, HD, has a size of 1920 by 1080 pixels. Most cameras take very high resolution images which are larger than the size of the standard video. This means that the time lapse is going to need to be scaled down to fit. I'm going to leave resize checked and uncheck scale proportionally. For this time lapse, I'm going to set it to the resolution of HD. Finally, quality determines the amount of compression that will occur when you export. In short, the higher the quality, the cleaner the final file will look. However, it will take longer to render and produce a larger file size. I found high quality to work well for YouTube. Now with all my settings configured, I can press export. If you have any questions about this process, feel free to ask in the comments below. For more tutorials like this one, and more advanced post-production videos, check out our YouTube channel.